the A-10 Thunderbolt II, also known as the Warthog. This fearsome and much-loved close air support aircraft, is often called on by ground forces to save the day. But now, the A-10 is fast approaching the end of its life. An old school workhorse, that can carry a heavy payload of powerful munitions, the A-10 has been in service for over 50 years. The entire aircraft was designed around a 30mm autocannon, one of the most powerful aircraft cannons ever flown. The barrels are so large, the landing gear had to be positioned off-center, so it could fit in the nose. More than 700 A-10s were built. The last new ones came off the assembly line way back in 1984. Since that time, there have been several modernization programs that have helped the aircraft stay airworthy much longer than was ever intended. Now, the A-10 is finally being retired from service over time. Every year the number in service declines due to retirements, and through attrition. Which raises the question, how many remain in the inventory, and how long can they last? Here in the Arizona desert, we can find some answers. This is the Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Center, at the davis monthan Air Base near Tucson, better known as the Boneyard. Here at davis monthan the fleet of retired aircraft can be managed for preservation, and harvested for spare parts. It's a process known as cannibalization. Dozens of old A-10s can be seen in this recent satellite imagery. The number sent here each year is growing. In this rare footage from inside the boneyard, the retired A-10s can be seen up close. Special heat shrunk plastic wrapping helps keep out the sand and UV rays, but it's doubtful many of the aircraft stored here will ever see combat again. Of the 700 A-10s that were built, approximately 260 remain in the inventory. Of those, 140 are with active duty units. An additional 66 are assigned to the Air National Guard. Another 54 are kept in reserve. Last year, the Air Force retired at least 39 A-10s, sending them to the Boneyard. Congress has authorized the retirement of an additional 42. Clearing off to Southwest Low. See ya. See ya. The Air Force plans to retire the entire A-10 fleet by 2029, or 2030 at the latest. That gives the A-10 a finite existence, as a close air support platform that can be called upon by ground forces. Here, at Osan Air Base in South Korea, the Air Force has maintained a forward deployed contingent of A-10s for a number of years. This group has long been part of contingency planning, to counter a potential mass incursion by North Korea. They have also provided a regional presence in the event of a conflict over Taiwan. But now, the Air Force has decided to withdraw these A-10s, beginning this year. The aircraft at Osan Air Base have been one of the longest tenured forward deployments for the A-10 anywhere in the world. Back stateside, here in Middle River, Maryland, we arrive at the 175th wing of the Air National Guard. The planes you see here are all headed to the Boneyard. This squadron is being disbanded. Pilots from these squadrons are often reassigned to different aircraft, or transferred to non-flying roles. When an A-10 squadron is disbanded, pilots fly their equipment to the boneyard as their final mission. It's a process the Air Force calls, divestment. 
Pilots say flying their aircraft to the boneyard as their final mission is an emotional experience. Many of them first trained in the Arizona desert at the start of their careers, and so returning for one last mission, is a poignant homecoming of sorts. Over the coming years, more A-10 pilots are going to have to be reassigned. The question being asked now is, what will fill the close air support role the A-10 has performed so well? And will ground troops have the same level of confidence in the newer platforms, to protect them in tough situations? Ready system, we back. 3041, my system, 2405 feet. 110, November Victor. The Air Force hopes the F-35 can fill the close air support role, although in a different way, using different tactics. The F-35 employs a combination of stealth and advanced targeting. Critics argue however, that it lacks the A-10's loiter time, and its payload capacity. Its battlefield survivability in high-intensity ground engagements cannot match that of the A-10, which was purpose-built, with redundant systems to survive, even if heavily damaged by enemy fire. Critics say the F-35 is an expensive and imperfect solution. A debate about the way forward for close air support continues. Some even advocate that the remaining A-10s be transferred to the Army and Marine Corps, which would take over their operation and maintenance. Tell us your thoughts on the F-35 versus the A-10, down in the comments. Flying back now to the Boneyard, in the desert near Tucson, we can learn more about what happens to the aircraft after they arrive here. Here, a newly arrived A-10 is towed to a flight line, where it will undergo a preservation process. Later, it will be moved to one of the storage areas, where it will sit for years, maybe even decades. Fuel systems will be flushed with a lightweight corrosion-inhibiting oil. Some structural components may be reinforced, and protective coverings will seal engine intakes and sensitive instrument nozzles. So, what this is is the flush farm, and uh, when, the, when we receive the aircraft, uh, they'll first come in and we'll, we'll take ownership of it. Uh, the first step is uh, to defuel it of its uh, JP-8, Jet A, whatever it has on it, and then we'll put the uh, 1010 on it. That's the preservative oil. And then it's our job to uh, run the engines to get all that oil going through, all the lines, all the components. That way it's preserved, it can be put in the desert. Uh, what our main function, I would say, is uh, we're really supporting the warfighter uh, in uh, whether the aircraft is stored as a whole, so it can be brought out for future use, or if it's going to be used as a part bird, that way we can get those needed assets back into the inventory as soon as possible. Um, so that's really our main job is to preserve these aircraft. My job title is uh, aircraft mechanic. Uh, the aircraft I'm working on today is uh, A-10 Warthog. Uh, we're here to preserve it today. And to do that, we initially had to take off the jet fuel that it came in with. And once we take that jet fuel off, then we throw in our system over here with the uh, 1010. And after we put enough 1010 on it to splash all the tanks, uh, we have to run the engines in order to cycle that 1010 through all the fuel lines within the engine so that they get preserved without having to do it a harder way in cold preservation. And then uh, after that, we shut down. We will take off all the 1010 and the aircraft is at that point preserved and ready to go to wash rack. Driving along the rows of aircraft in the boneyard is like touring a museum of aviation history. The A-10s sit alongside other iconic aircraft that have been here for many years.
In this dramatic aerial footage, you can get a sense of the vast scale of these storage yards. More than 4,000 aircraft are kept here, although the inventory fluctuates depending on need, intake of new arrivals, and sales to foreign governments. The Boneyard is operated by the 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group, also called AMARG. It provides this storage and maintenance service to all branches of the U.S. military, as well as civilian agencies of the federal government such as NASA. One of the questions often asked when looking through this inventory, why were there so many different aircraft types, in previous eras? The answer is that there's been a change in the philosophy of procurement. Today the Pentagon prefers multi-role platforms with modular designs, that can do more than one job. For example, you can see in these images many old carrier-borne Navy aircraft, like the S-3 Viking, the A-6 Intruder, the A-7 Corsair, and the F-4 Phantom. Most of these missions are now flown by the F-A-18 Super Hornet, which marked a shift toward multi-role efficiency, when it replaced those older aircraft. These images feel like something from an aviation enthusiast's dream vacation. Among the most iconic aircraft stored at the Boneyard, are B-52 bombers. As you can see from these images, retired B-52s are often stored with their wings separated. The reason is a 1991 arms control treaty between the US and the former Soviet Union. It reduced the number of strategic bombers each side could have. It required that both sides be able to verify disabled bombers with satellite imagery. These wings and tail sections were left laying beside the airframe so that the Russians could see them from space. How do you feel about the plans to retire so many of the A-10s from active service? And what do you think the future of close air support should be? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments. If you'd like more short histories like this, be sure to hit the thumbs up button to let us know. And subscribe to our channel for the latest episodes. Thanks for watching.